So you've just had a microdisectomy at L5S1 and the nerve pain is easing, but no one's told you what actually happened there and how to stop it from happening again. A microdisectomy is great at removing the fragment that's pressing on your nerve, but it doesn't fix the real injury, the tear in the disc wall, the annulus fibrosis that allowed the nucleus of the disc to escape in the first place. That part is still injured. And if we're honest, that's what you need to protect and rebuild now. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Michael Fatika, the lead osteopath and spine specialist here at Back in Shape. We help people around the UK and all over the world fix their back injuries from home, including after surgery, and get back in shape for the long term. And for many, an L5-S1 microdisectomy is a brilliant at reducing the symptoms, but it doesn't heal the disc. It doesn't rebuild the ligaments, and it certainly doesn't stabilize the segment. So while you might feel better, especially with less nerve pain, the segment is still injured and vulnerable. At this time, most rehab advice post-surgery is vague. Don't do too much, don't lift anything, just walk around and avoid sitting. But living in the real world, we know that life doesn't wait. You're getting in and out of cars, you're dressing, caring for kids or pets, using the bathroom. These are all loaded and sometimes relatively strenuous movements, and they're happening right now, whether anyone's approved them officially or not. The good news is that your disc can heal, and the annulus is a ligamentous tissue. It goes through the healing processes just like any other. But unlike your sprained ankle, you can't rest your spine completely. You've got only one, so stability and controlled movement become essential post-op. Exercises like those we talk about in the core five, dead bug, the marching bridge, squat, hip hinge, and step up act as a foundation using movements that are emblematic of those you're already doing every single day. For example, the squat, getting out of your hospital bed to go to the bathroom was one of the very first movements you did, maybe with a little help, after your surgery. These exercises or movements are not aggressive and they're not glamorous, but done with care and attention. They are going to be how you regain confidence in your body without setting yourself back. Think about it. Most people don't re-herniate their disc deadlifting 100 kilos. They do it getting off the toilet awkwardly or twisting suddenly in the car or often something even more simple. In these early days post microdisectomy, it's not about strength, but it is about control. And you have to start conservatively at the right level for you. To help you do that, a few simple tools can really accelerate your recovery and reduce the risk of flare-up. First, Film yourself. Use your phone to record exercises like the squat or hip hinge. It's the fastest way to spot if your spine is rounded or twisting without you noticing, and often it is. Second, use a mirror in the room. That visual feedback in the moment is incredibly powerful. And thirdly, try the tape test. It's a method we use to check if there is loss of spinal positioning during daily movements. We've linked to it down in the description, so you can always check that video out after this one. It is a lifesaver. Remember, the microdisectomy may well remove a lot of that pain, but it doesn't restore control. That's your job now. If you take it seriously, you can come back stronger and more stable and far more resilient than before. As we discussed in the episode on healing a herniated disc, you can check that one also out in the link down below. Finally, if you want more lengthy discussions on this topic, then check out the longer version of this exact video and article on the website. We've also linked to it down below. We started doing these kind of condensed versions of the podcast to help those of you who just want the bare bones. So let us know down in the comments if you like these sort of shorter to the point versions or if you prefer the longer, more detailed episodes. And of course, if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. I do hope you found this one helpful and consider sharing it with someone else who's struggling, whether they've herniated a disc, whether they've had surgery, or even if they haven't, it should really help them. And if you're looking for a more structured approach with support along the way, then check out the links down in the description. We've got the free masterclass, which is also available on the YouTube channel, as well as the full Back in Shape program membership that can help guide you every single step of the way. But whatever you choose, keep learning, keep moving, and stay consistent.